y'all, I'm about to have fence panels dropped off and there's literally a second line going on. Like, this is only New Orleans right here. Only New Orleans Now, some of you might be asking yourself, what is a parade doing going down your street, Voice Monet? Well, if you're not from New Orleans, you could easily be thrown off, but this is actually a cultural tradition here. It's called a second line, and it's a way in which we honor our recently deceased. It comes from African spiritualism, and of course we always inject some jazz, but it was highly inconvenient at the moment I needed these fence panels delivered. So. That didn't work. Now, not only was there a second line happening in front of my house at the moment these panels were delivered, I had this lovely delivery driver looking for an opening to get to my street because here in New Orleans, we have very low hanging power lines. And he was very concerned that he might snag one of those power lines. So after a bit of commotion, hullabaloo, shall we call it? We coordinated meeting at a local truck stop near Lowe's. I drove my vehicle over to the truck stop and this lovely gentleman, I can't remember his name, but he was super, super helpful. We loaded all 22 steel fence panels into the back of my car and we made it work. And this is some of the things that I mean when I say when you take on these DIY projects. Again, I discussed this in the last episode. You either have the time or you have the money. Now I carved out the space to make sure I had the time because I knew I was going to be able to get this project off the ground by saving the money doing the work myself but it was work y'all it was work so we got all 22 lovely panels into the car and I brought them home and boy was I happy when I got these bad boys home because they're so cute so adorable worth the effort it was worth the effort. Now, this is the point in the build where I had to get real with myself. Um, I am a black belt martial artist. I have been practicing for about five years and I was continuing to go to class faithfully during this build out. But there was a point where I started to feel both worlds collide and it wasn't working for me. But martial arts teaches you discipline and that's exactly what I needed for this build. Now, most people get to chill, find a place to zen before they go test. Not me. I, of course, have steel fence poles being delivered from Lowe's. Ain't that some shit? Look at it. Good morning. Right here is fine. Look at Lowe's. Good morning. What? I had the wrong address, y'all. Can you believe it? Okay. Look, y'all, I got the post. And this brilliant man found me even though I put the wrong address. My bad. Now, because I only had about 35 minutes before I had to get to the dojo, I unfortunately had to wake up my youngest son, Yusef, who you see here, who unhappily had to help me relocate all these fence posts to the backyard because I was not gonna leave them out front. People still in my neighborhood, which was why I was really trying to get this fence up in the first place. I had a, a weed whacker stolen off my back porch simple stuff no no harm no foul but I definitely wasn't gonna leave newly acquired materials on the sidewalk while I went to the dojo so I woke Yusef up much to his dismay and he helped me walk all the posts to the back of the house so that they be remotely secured all right so now that we had all the fence posts in the back of the house my nephew hopped on the scene, shout out Dylan, 
and he helped me demo all the posts that we did not upcycle. There were some that were very, very small or uh, in bad shape. We pulled those out or the top rail on the old chain link fence. We pulled that out. That's what you see us breaking down here. And we did this with an angle grinder. Now, the angle grinder is a crazy power tool, y'all. Um, I was happy that Dylan came into the picture around this time because I wasn't ready to deal with a power tool that created sparks. And this one created sparks. It kind of reminds you of welding. This is an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. Um, you definitely need protective gear. This is one of those things that I did not play with. But you see Dylan here, he don't have protective gear. He's got on flip-flops and socks. So we're chuckling about that. But he could have easily caught himself on fire. I'm like, oh my God. Don't try this at all. So many people on YouTube screaming at us. Like, oh my God, he had on socks. That's Dylan. That's Dylan for you. That's what he did. All right, so now that we had the old fence posts demoed, I decided to start laying out where the new posts were gonna go. Cause remember I had pulled some posts out and we're upcycling some and then we're creating new posts locations for new ones. We finally got to post driving. All right guys, uh, sun's about to set and we're over here about to drive some posts. Titan. Oh man. Oh man indeed, because the Titan Post Driver is a beast. Um, you do need help. Um, I brought my homie Mike, who you'll see throughout very key moments in this build. Mike really showed up and did me a solid, but um, he showed up after work one day and helped me drive all the steel posts that we could get into the ground, into the ground. We did hit a couple of tree roots, especially in the back by the banana tree. So um, that was still a little bit of problem solving that needed to happen. But ultimately, we got the job done. Well, woke up and they're still standing. I gotta cure a couple of them. But looks like your girl gonna have a fit soon, dog. So I was wondering why we were reaching resistance the other evening when trying to dig these post holes. Take a look at this, y'all. It's like a foot down and there's like layers of brick. Like there used to be a brick road down here. Look at this. It's like more brick. All right. Got another foot to go. How fun. So I finally did dig a deep enough hole and I ended up having to use cement in that hole um, for that brick post. We had to dig out a big, big trench to anchor that post in. And then I realized I had run out of posts. I did not have enough posts because some of the posts that I thought I was going to be able to upcycle weren't usable. So I returned to Lowe's, grabbed some more fence posts and got ready to come back home to set more posts. Now, I ended up purchasing the hydraulic fence post driver from Titan because I knew I was on a learning curve. I couldn't trust myself to rent a post driver and learn it in a week. I also knew that I had other um, landscaping tasks that the post driver would be valuable and I always figured I could resell it once I was done with this build. It would have been cheaper than renting it. So I purchased the Titan post driver from Amazon. Um, the link is in the description below. I highly recommend it if you want to forego dealing with um, setting wooden fence posts. If you're in an area with high humidity like me, a lot of rain. I chose steel so I didn't have to worry about rot or termites. Um, but I highly recommend the Titan post driver. Now it is a bitch to start up sometimes. But once you get it going, it gets rolling and it got the jo job done pretty fast. Like I did 150 feet of fence. No, 210 foot length of fence. Yeah and um, got it done in less than a day. 
Now, after we drove the posts in, I did not want to just rely on driving the posts in. I also wanted to make sure that these posts were reinforced and anchored. And since this is a sustainable build, I always like to use everything that I have on hand first before I have to go purchase something. So what you are seeing is me filling up these posts with concrete. It had been raining the two days before, and so the post had about maybe like a foot, foot and a half of concrete. I set it with quick creep to make sure that the post had a little bit more heft to them. And there were several posts that I actually um, drove in rebar as well to reinforce because this is gonna be a steel and wood panel fence. We do get hurricanes, we do get high winds and tropical storms. And I needed to make sure that this fence was gonna be sturdy and it was going to last. So I'm reinforcing it with quickcrete and rainwater, either rainwater that is already in the poles or rainwater for my rain barrels. And then once I have the poles filled, I reinforce it with these fire pit bricks and two by fours to make sure that it's plumb because what you don't want is a leaning fence. And there were some of the old poles were kind of lean and so I had to make sure that they were gonna be positioned correctly before I added the weight of the steel panels and the wood. So that's what you see me doing here. Just reinforcing and always checking for plumb to make sure that my fence line is gonna be as straight as possible. But this is New Orleans. Everything's kind of wonky here. It didn't have to be super precise, but it had to work. So that's what you see me doing here. And then I go about continuing to reinforce these poles. See me adding a little bit more concrete right here. And if you listen closely, you can hear the water, which I thought was pretty cool. Now this is just me paying attention to my backyard, knowing my landscape and my environment and utilizing what was readily available to me. You don't learn this in construction, in any trade school, you know? But it worked, because I got a fence, y'all. So now we have fast forward about a week. I've let the fence post cure with that concrete, made sure that it was anchored steady, and now you are seeing me and Ori add our fence post brackets to the fence. Now we're doing an extra step that I realized was not necessary. We are checking for level between each bracket. This ended up actually being a waste of time. This did not matter because the Osco fence brackets that I use, they're very flexible. Um, and as long as the stringer is level, which is all you need to worry about once you're putting the fence panels on, where the bracket is positioned is kind of arbitrary. So we wasted about 40 minutes to an hour doing this step because this is the first fence I ever um, made. But once I was over that learning curve, I just sailed through the second side of the fence. You know, you live and you learn. And that's what I want you guys to remember. Allow yourself some grace during these processes. As you're learning, you're gonna think you're gonna be able to knock something out super, super quick, and sometimes you won't. Like, I'm used to moving very fast. This process was a very humbling experience because between nature and learning a new industry, really and truly, um, it takes time. And still I was able to do it. So we are leveling these stringers. And then at some point I just asked Ori to just start adding some fence brackets for me, bruh. Like you do the fence brackets. We're putting three on each post because there's a bottom stringer, a middle stringer, and a top stringer. And he's dropping it for me so I can come back and add all of the stringers. And boy, was it a process. But it ended up turning out beautiful, y'all. I, I, I sit outside every morning and look at the fence that I made, as well as just how the whole environment has come together. And it was all worth the work, y'all, all worth the work. Now, I do highly recommend that you have help when you work on a fence. Um, when I could not get help, I used construction clamps. And boy, when I tell you clamps, do a great job of replacing a human being's hands. They help a lot. So much of this build was done, just me using clamps. So if you are alone or you can't rely on the people around you to help you out, wherever you can, buy you a good set of clamps, large, small, it helps in this process. 
Well, it looks like that brings us to the end of this week's episode. If you have any questions about any of the materials you saw me use or you're interested in maybe copping that Titan post driver, make sure you hit the link in the description below. If you find yourself gaining something of value from this channel and you'd like to show your support, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. And if you really want to help out, check out my Patreon in the link below. It's all things holistically DIY. I'll catch you next week. Peace. Man, gotta love nature. Check out how the magnolia branch right here perfectly leveled my stringer and getting there for this fence thank you magnolia tree